have you heard, I'm sure, that the CEO of United Healthcare, I don't I think he was Brian something. Fuck, I don't remember. I don't care about Brian his name. Brian Thompson. But Brian Thompson. Yeah, yeah, he got that's the that's the most respect he's gonna get in the show. We're gonna hear his hear his name. But he was gunned down yesterday at 7 a.m. outside of a hotel on his way to a shareholders meeting that still went on, by the way. The share they they did not postpone the meeting, they had that it anyway. That's crazy. That's, that's not really an example funny. of that's funny, really man. funny. If yes. that's not like, 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 like choose to say who you're going to serve, they them shareholders were like, yeah, mammon, obviously like, yeah. fuck this guy. Exactly. We have, a, yeah. we have a meeting to get on to. They stepped over his, his body. No, the they did floor. not. No, you're so, lying to no, me. No, no. So he was shot outside the hotel, not outside the conference building, but I'm just saying that, you know, his, he, he got shot. The meeting Tim, was, do you a, think it would have changed anything if they right? stepped no, over his body? No, yeah, right, really? Yeah. Right. They didn't put the yellow tape and it did the chalk outline and they just kept on their way or whatever. Hey, those quarterly earnings, we got to have the update on this. And it's like, they didn't even have to have it in person. Like, I don't know why they bothered doing that, but the, uh, they they had the meeting, their shareholder, like the stock actually increased and everything like that, which I think goes to show you how unimportant CEOs actually are. Like the guy, like, wow. like, right? Like if, uh, if, if, if like someone who was like a skilled artisan or something dies, the work suffers. A CEO, they're plug and play folks or they're gone. But all right, John, what were your, well, actually we'll go to our guest first. Tim, what were your thoughts when you first heard about this uh, tragic event? Well, honestly, as a Christian, it is tragic. Like we, I abhor the loss of life. Sorry, it's true. Like, you know, one of our one of our core pillars as new evangelicals is non dehumanization. So for me, I absolutely hate that this man was gunned down, and I absolutely hate the healthcare system that he, our insurance system that he represented. I mean, they're they're they've killed many more people. Okay? Yes. I'm not trying to minimize any of that. To me, it's a both and. As far as I know, this guy was married, so a partner is no longer um, around. I think he might have had kids. That to me is a huge, his kids don't give a fuck like what he was doing. They don't have a dad. To me, that's tragic. And I don't think that gunning down people is going to solve problems long term. And at the same time, I fucking hate American healthcare. It is the biggest garbage system ever that sucks up money from the middle and lower class and putting them into debt, de denying their claims. And this man represents the biggest company who does that shit. Right. I think that their, their quarterly profit was like nine billion. And also on the shell casing was what denied, deposed, and something else. So obviously this was motivated. It seems like at least on the surface, we don't have all, all the details yet, but it seems like it was motivated by the fucking predatory insurance company ecosystem that's allowed to flourish here in the United States. Well, I think the number I read was uh, today 14 million people, 6% of the US population have medical debt. 1%, it's over $10,000 in medical debt. That's not including student loan debt. It doesn't fucking add up. You know, the fact that again, we live in the world's richest country and people are going into debt to get life-saving care is ridiculous. I run a small nonprofit. I have to go through the, the New Jersey healthcare marketplace. I make uh, not enough money so i get a subsidy if i make any more that subsidy goes away 800 bucks a month for me and my partner not including my kids mm. they're covered somewhere else that doesn't include my deductible or copay or, or for in network or out of network it's fucking crazy it's crazy so honestly like i i completely mourn the loss of this guy's life i do i absolutely do as a christian every person's made in the image of god no exceptions no answers for butts and also our system here is absolute dog shit and I hate it and I hate it and I hate it. <laughs> John, John, before you hop in, I want to talk about something Tim said where you mentioned he was married. You're correct. And I want to put up a statement from his wife. I don't know if you guys saw this because they asked his wife what they had. Have you seen it, John? I know. New to me. Yeah. So they asked his wife uh, if she had seen anything suspicious beforehand and she responded Yes, there have been some death threats. I don't know the details. His wife, Paulette Thompson, told the New York, uh, the network after her husband was shot in New York City Wednesday morning. I just know he said that there are some people who have been threatening him. She believed, this is a quote, she believed the threats had to do with a lack of coverage, uh, ostensibly referring to United Healthcare. So that's kind of blocked out there, but she said, like, lack of coverage or something is what she said. Well, so, well like, really quick, TJ, I'm sorry to cut you off. <laughs> Don't forget, the same day this happened, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield announces that, that they're going to limit the amount of anesthesia that anesthesiologists can give patients in surgery. They're going to cut back the amount of time that they're going to cover. Like, Tim, are you Tim, freaking they went back kidding on me? That. They went, yes, oh, they did? Yes. 
they today, 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 aren't doing ago. that now. <laughs> yeah, there is like, a god of some yep. sort. I mean, maybe a cruel <laughs> one, but there's a god. I mean, <laughs> there is a god, Tim. His name is Colton Wesson, <laughs> and he. he <laughs> so, so this is. There are so many places to take this, and God, uh, I, I, in our in our um, left wing creator group chat, uh, someone brought up. I forget who said it. Was it Destructive Hugo? Uh, yeah. One of our friends of the show um, said that this was very similar to the uh, to the submarine incident, and also the Orca Wells uh, attacking the yachts, and like how the internet has rejoiced. Like, yes. Like, and and this one more than any of the others. Like, I remember with the submarine, there was a lot of like cl- fucking chloroform. Pearl clutch, pearl clutching, pearl clutching, pearl <laughs> clutching. Um, uh, that happened. I have not seen much pearl clutching. I have seen mostly. Yep. And I am in the bubble of the internet that like you would see more of the animosity towards this guy, but like it has been nearly universal. And it's, I agree with you, Tim. Like I, I myself am a pacifist. I, I, I believe in nonviolence. I believe that not just because of my moral values, but because I've, I've done research and I've seen that when it comes to revolution, nonviolence is the more effective way to do it because violence, while it can be effective at accomplishing short-term goals, is not very effective at getting people on your side. In real, well, like systemic violence is very effective at getting. Doesn't seem that way today, but, John. But if you, if, if you don't have the the system to continue to perpetuate that violence, it doesn't last yeah, very caveat, long. Caveat, caveat. If, there, if there's no billion dollar propaganda machine to justify it, <laughs> exactly, exactly. The, the lone wolf is gonna is gonna lose that most of the time. But but the thing is, there is a desire for it. Like that, there, there is there is so many people have been harmed by the actions of this man and what he represents yeah so to their core uh health healthcare debt is the number one cause of bankruptcy in this country i was trying I, i've been trying to research and find like hey how many like debts is like denied health insurance coverage like responsible for we don't fucking know there, there's no public wow. data on this. The last things I saw were from like the when we were originally pushing for Obamacare and some reports came out that like 40,000 people died because they weren't insured every year. But like I haven't seen any actual data or evidence to show how many people die because of uh, they, they were denied a claim or they weren't able to get health care or their coverage or their health care was delayed because they couldn't get coverage. This is a level of death and suffering that the greatest terrorist you ever heard of could only pray to, um, to to accomplish one day. It is an immensity of human suffering that we're seeing outpour over this. And you, as you said, you hate it. Everyone hates this. Even the mo- as you said, like with your earlier in the show, you talked about uh, you, th- this acquaintance that you have who is a super MAGA, uh, you know, a big right. person. Even right. they were like, yeah, no, this is kind of ridiculous because right. any way you look at it, it's more expensive. We don't have great health care. Every anyone who's ever been like trying to find a doctor uh to, that matches their insurance has just gone through that fucking customer service hellscape. Oh my it god. Sucks. Everyone it's hates it. It's and the you know the, I want to circle back to the morality of, of of killing this guy um because it is a very interesting question, but I do also have to say the Democrats, I don't know how much more of a clear signal you can get. Then you're fucking centrist. I will veto universal health care. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris getting their fucking asses kicked by Donald Trump. Joe Rogan fucking being like, I'm going to support Bernie in 2020, but I'm going to support Trump in 2024. And this just outpouring of support for this cold-blooded assassination. I, I don't know how much more of a clear message the Democratic Party needs to hear of, hey, Maybe we bottle up this energy and direct it at the people responsible. And that's not to say support going out and killing people, but to be like, hey, let's dismantle the private health care system. Let's replace it with something that works for the people. It is such an easy goddamn win electorally, rhetorically, politically, power wise so much. And they just won't do it. It just it's it's it, 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 it is so infuriating. And I, it, it really, TJ, what are, what are your thoughts here? Yeah. Well, I wrote down a whole <laughs> bunch of things before the show started. And one of them was about this very thing because uh, not just the Democrats, but the Republicans too. Because what's really bothered me is that this outpouring of support for this national hero, remember, remember the 4th of December, is that we have an entire political party 
that has been telling us it's my entire life that universal health care is bad. This is something that well, we actually want private health care. We don't even want Obamacare, this like this right. tepid thing trying to fix it. We so support. Tepid. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I've been told that people love private health care insurance. I, I know. I know people who have said it and they said, well, you know, we don't really want the government getting involved. And everyone's happy about this. Which one? fucking is it like which one republicans like that that's what i, I get like the uh, being upset with the democrats and everything because yeah we push for this but the right wingers that i see they're like oh isn't this funny well what's what's the problem you guys this is the exact system you want you want the private health care to make money off of this but you're acting like this is all cool and everything also uh yeah i, I was uh, john mentioned that <sighs> all right so I'm not happy when a human being dies. I, I'm not a monster, folks. I'm not putting it that way. But I am saying this, that you ever know someone who really loves animals? There's someone who's just really in love with animals. They, they, they talk about it all the time. You ever notice they don't seem to care much about people? There seems to be like a limited number, a mi limited amount of love you can have in your heart. And so if you put too much of it on animals, you're going to like be a little bit misanthropic. There's only so much uh, love I can put out for serial killers, which is what I consider this guy. I consider him someone who has killed thousands of people to put an extra dollar in his pocket. And not only uh, are, are is uh, is uh, United Healthcare denying health insurance claims for people. There's a, I forget the name of the department. Every insurance company has a department that's meant to check over claims at the end of every year and go back and like uh, deny them after the fact to take the money back from those folks. It's even worse than that. So last year, while this guy was still CEO, uh, United Healthcare was sued because they are using an AI system to automatically deny people their healthcare benefits. And wait, 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 uh, TJ, TJ, before, before you say, cause Tim, have you heard about this? I don't think I have. Tim, I want you to guess the percentage of claims that this AI software erroneously denies. Oh, I don't know. Uh, two out of 10, 30 percent, something like that. Oh, good guess, Tim. Good, good guess. guess. That, that, seems like a reasonable, that seems like a reasonable, like, oh, my God, it would be so awful if right. they did a full 30 percent of claims. Even that's high. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm even like, that's I'm high. You're right, Tim. Anyway, TJ, continue. Let's go. <laughs> All right, let's fucking go. All right. So this AI system was put in place. So like they they used it on elderly people. That they was almost exclusively used on mm -hmm. elderly people who would file these claims, and the AI would review it and uh, either approve or deny it. So the families of two now deceased former beneficiaries of United Health have filed a lawsuit against the healthcare giant, alleging it knowingly used a faulty artificial intelligence algorithm to deny elderly patients coverage for extended care deemed necessary by their doctors. The lawsuit filed Tuesday in federal court in Minnesota, this is last year, United Health illegally denied elderly no. patients care. <laughs> elderly patients care owed to them under medical uh, Medicare Advantage plans by developing an AI model known by the company to have a 90% no. error rate, overriding determinations made by the no. patient's physicians and the expenses were medically necessary. Yeah, so if you guys didn't understand what I was saying there, they would deny the claims. The claim would be challenged. Nine out of 10 times the patient won the challenge just because the AI, they didn't give a fuck. And this guy oversaw that. He implemented that. The... Um, 30 per, like I saw the chart with uh different different insurance companies United Health had like a 30% rejection rate for their uh for their patients yeah like this guy this guy killed people for a living that's what he did all right and so yeah I I'm not a fan of human beings dying don't feel a lot of sympathy for this guy which is why I, there's the outpouring of support for this dude is so strong and I got to say I don't know if you guys saw that there's a $10,000 bounty on this guy what a fucking insultingly low number you think <laughs> would, would you turn this guy in for 10k would you would anyone listening I how badly dude, would you that's need an entire deductible for some people it's so like, it's like, <laughs> but it's like like what are you, you be mad at this guy you you think I, I also all right Speaking, stepping out of the morality part, where if we're going to assume that all human life has equal value as as uh, creatures, if we're going to talk into the uh, social utility part, like the reason that we lock people up who commit murders is that these people are a dangerous society. Like we right. don't want if you're going to kill one person, you might kill another one. Do I think this guy is going to kill me? I don't. I don't. I don't think he's right. going to kill you. I don't think he's going to kill. As like, I think if he's going to go through the trouble of writing delay, deny, depose, he's a very particular type of killer. Right. I don't fit that profile. And anyone who does, I don't feel a lot of. They can hire security. That's how I feel about it. So go ahead, Tim. Sorry, we're well, going to say no. No, you're good. All I was going to say was that, um, you know, it's interesting that you bring this up, I, and I think it's a point worth exploring. Because uh, James Cone uh, writes in Black Theology and Black Power, he makes this point of like, why 
why and he's writing from a context of like you know there's blatant like police violence being used in mass towards black people when they're fighting back and they're getting arrested. Like he's, he's in like this, like it's like the, the throes of the early civil rights movement. And he says, why is it when the state uses violence, it's sanctioned, but then when people use violence to get the boot off of their neck, suddenly they're violent, they're criminals, etc. And I think what happens is, and this is how effective propaganda can be because we don't see the countless lives that these organ that these companies um, have, have, ended because of denied claims or because they bankrupted patients beyond the point of being able to get access medicine right so we don't think about it as a tragedy but when this person is shot which by the way i will say is definitely a tragedy we all of a sudden have like a very different reaction like, oh my god i can't believe that but then every day we go on with our day not thinking about the thousands however many people are being denied health care coverage for the sake of bottom line corporate profit which is <laughs> just as as abhorrent and should shock us right into a, a moment of sobriety where like we should all as a country be like wait if people are dying because these systems are set up to extract the most amount of money out of people with the least amount of quality care that has to be reworked because people and look we can tie this back to the pro-life mantra right do people have a right to life or not do they have the right to life, all people or not? And so I'm with you all the way on this. I think it's a very interesting, not not just thought experiment because it has real world consequences, but it kind of pulls the curtains behind, back behind how we think about what's appropriate and what isn't, right? For a lot of people, it's appropriate for healthcare companies to, to deny claims. That's no big deal. It's not appropriate for someone to be shot in the street. It's like, well, why is one okay and the other isn't? Mm -hmm. Tim, Tim, something that I... I, I... I actually haven't said this publicly yet, but I guess I'm saying it now um, that if you're going to clutch your pearls over this guy dying and you're like, oh, it's 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 terrible to kill someone. OK, OK. You know, I, I can agree with that. I agree with you. Like, I, I morally agree. Murder is wrong in, in every situation um, with the exception of self-defense. Right. Sure. If, did you cheer when Osama, Osama bin Laden was killed? Right. Because if you were happy when Osama bin Laden was killed, recognize that this man killed thousands more people than Osama bin Laden ever did in his entire life for a reason which is far worse than the reasoning behind what Osama bin Laden did. He did it just for money. He just right. killed thousands and thousands and thousands of people for money, for shareholder value. That is it. These healthcare companies aren't providing a service. They aren't right. trying to accomplish a goal. They aren't right. trying to help the world in any way, shape, or form. Their entire raison d'etre is to just make right. money. Right. And that's why they do what they do. And if you are going to sit there and say, you know, if you're going to bite the bullet and say murder's always wrong, I, I, I'm going to agree with you. But if you're going to say it's okay to cheer on yep. the killing of Osama bin Laden or any other bad guy, fu fucking Hitler, fucking whoever. You know, okay, Hitler prop, Hitler has a higher body count. My bad on that one. But most <laughs> most bad guys in history. Good retraction right? there, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> um, you're, but yeah. But yeah. you're not gonna. But you're gonna tell me that I shouldn't find any joy in this monster being killed? Like it's a it, it's a guilty pleasure for me. I do enjoy. <laughs> I also think it's wrong. It's it's I, just I'm, a I'm, pleasure. I'm a multifaceted <laughs> individual. I'm capable of being a hypocrite. But like, oh, I, just, I just don't think though. Like I, I understand what you're saying on like the you know like the guilty pleasure piece, but it just doesn't solve anything. Like I don't think again like pragmatically mm -hmm. this doesn't fix the problem. It doesn't fix any problem. Do, and we know this because the shareholders metaphorically walked over this guy's dead body to keep the system going all right like like killing a ceo they are expendable he'll he has a successor probably named by now if not by tomorrow and the system will continue on that doesn't get the change done that we want to see done i mean i the uh, blue cross blue shield did reverse their uh their i actually can't believe they did the that the next DJ. day that was a mistake that, now it could be an accident that could be a coincidence but I don't know. Like the next fucking day, it seems kind of funny. My AJ, personal this opinion still out there, and there's a lot more insurance companies. There are a CEOs. lot my, more CEOs out there. My <laughs> personal opinion is that I think it was the Anesthesiologist Association that put the pressure on to get them to reverse course, probably more <laughs> than a murder. But that's just. Yeah. My so uh, <laughs> first, I want to uh, throw out to any conservatives listening out there. John said raison d'etre. That 
is French for reason for being, just so you guys know. Oh, um, thank you. That helps me. I didn't know that. Thank oh, you. Wait, I'm wait, like, wait, man, man, I'm speaking in tongues. Shambhala Hamala. He's slaying the spirit. I was dunking on conservatives. It's a you know, friendly fire here on this show. But um, so, all right. Uh, I wanted to address a comment here. Uh, where was it? Uh, she was from Emile. She, oh, yeah. She wrote, uh, Oh, Emmeline, she says, I mean, you guys come back to the gunpowder plot connection. I'm gonna cry if you guys catfished me. So what she's talking about is the thumbnail. So the thumbnail I made for this episode, it showed a picture of Brian, what's his name? And the caption said, remember, remember the 4th of December. I wasn't planning on actually talking about the gunpowder plot, but since you asked, I guess you should say, but that the remember, remember the 4th of December is a reference to a poem uh, about the gunpowder plot in England with Guy Fox. And it's remember, remember the 5th of November, gunpowder treason and plot. I can think of no reason why gunpowder treason should ever be forgot. And it's talking about a man named Guy Fox. Now, if you've seen V for Vendetta, the mask that that guy wears, and you'll see people wear it like anonymous, they wear that mask. That is a Guy Fox mask. And Guy Fox was a, uh, a British dude who wanted to overthrow Parliament. And he, it's called the gunpowder plot. He took a whole bunch of barrels of gunpowder put it underneath Parliament, and he and a few friends were going to light it, kill everyone in Parliament, and they they act, they act they talk about it like it's, um, he was executed and, you know, caught and everything, but it's a scene as a symbol of rebellion, like Guy Fox is stand up against the man. Don't look too deep into it, because Guy Fox wanted to, like, install the Pope as the ruler, so trust me, like, not anything better, but uh, that's what we want to talk about there. It doesn't really have any connection to the gunpowder plot, I just thought that the, it was funny to make a poem out of it, and uh, Guy Fox, too, no, not someone to worship, because if you check, he had an alias. The bulletproof alias he used to hide his uh, illegal actions, John Johnson was the alias that Guy Fox taught. So yeah, not, not someone you really want to look up to on there. But uh, but yeah, this whole thing with, uh, with uh, what's his name? I keep forgetting his name, Brian Johnson or something I want to say about this guy. Yeah, yeah he, uh, I, just, I just see the outpouring support for this and I wonder what happens now. Because I think, John, what you were talking about this is a sign that Democrats need to run on universal health care, something we've been saying for a long time. I don't think it would be easy, though. I don't. I think it would be a, a, a long, drawn-out fight. I think every Republican that voted against Trump will stand up against this. They won't, they won't be for it. I honestly believe, in my heart of hearts, the only way we're going to get universal health care in this country is if Donald Trump supports it. That's it. I think that's the only way it's going to happen. I think that if anyone not named Donald Trump... Uh, puts this forward to the people, you're going to hear the same bullshit you always hear about. I, I agree. Go ahead. You no, agree? I, I agree. Th think about make America healthy again. I'm like, oh, uh, God, you know, I damn, remember when good. Michelle Obama yes. like had a whole fucking initiative on this shit and Glenn Beck and his team was mocking her. Like, oh. wait, all of a sudden we care about health? Like, I'm, I'm sorry. Have you guys been around? Like, people have been... I watched Food, Inc. like 10 years ago when I realized, like, oh, everything is rearranged corn syrup in, in our grocery aisles. We need to fix that. So I completely agree. And again, that's what makes me so aggravated. Like, wait a second, guys. You want RFK, the anti-vaccine nut job, to make America healthy again? Now you care about, about what's in school lunches, yet you also want to defund the Department of Education? Like, you can't have it both ways. You can't argue about defunding schools and how groomers are in schools and our kids are being indoctrinated and then go, oh, my God, they're eating Doritos. Like, yeah, no shit. If they had the right funding, we could fix this. It's the same thing, right? They're opportunists. They're opportunists because you're right. You know tomorrow if trump was like the healthcare system is predatory yep it is not for the working person and we need to think we got to drain the swamp oh charlie kirk tomorrow amen yeah no, yep. trump's totally right we got to get rid of these these dude think about big pharma same thing right all of a sudden the same people who used to love big pharma and yep. medicine who used to love you no know, no corporate profits guys we need more free market solutions right oh big pharma they're pushing the vaccine just for profit just for profit like wait wait oh, 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 guys the whiplash i can't keep up like what are we doing here so i am totally i completely agree with you which again should just drive us batshit crazy. It, I did want to, yeah, I, I did want to ask you a, qu a quick question about this because I was a Republican for most of my life, period. I am, and I don't know if this is unjustified or not. You guys probably know more about, more about this than I do, but I'm pissed at Democrats a ton for not getting affordable health care done. And I feel like, like, like they could have over and over again. And I'm like, I'm freaking pissed. But maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's been Republicans the whole time. But I don't know. Like, what the hell, guys? Don't tell me you want affordable health care. And here we are. We still can't fucking get it. Dude, since, what, 
since Clinton has been talked about in Democratic parties. We need more affordable health care. It's worse than ever. Well, John, before John, before you hop in on this, I know you want to, but uh, Tim is right. Like uh, this, so you guys know why Obamacare is called Obamacare. It's not just because of the, the Obamacare. It was for the when healthcare yep. initiative was first brought out. It was Hillary Clinton back when she was first lady back in like 1994 or something. And I remember this. I remember it was all over the place. And she was on the news saying how she wanted to give people like these health care cards across the nation. Everyone got to use them and everything. And uh, they called it Hillary, uh, Hillary care. They derisively yep. referred to it as Hillary care. Yep. And the Republicans crushed it like the yep. media and uh, the Republican establishment just burned it into the ground so much so that people still think socialized medicine is some sort of horrible thing. It was very effective. And they tried the same thing with Obamacare. And it ended up not really working. People like kind of liked it. It's, it's kind of soured now because it's needlessly complex and elaborate. When we, sh it's not even universal health care. But that's what we should be going for. But I, John will probably mention this. But the Democrats could and couldn't in, in, uh, implement universal health care because they had a supermajority for like nine minutes back in 2009 or something. But not all 60 Democrats were for it. You always have two or three conservative Democrats that aren't for it. But they also could have if they would have gotten rid of the filibuster, which they could have. And they did not. And so, John, but go ahead. What are you going to say about it? Yeah, no, Tim, there's a to, 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 to go off on a tangent for a minute here. What you just said reminded me of uh, if, you, if you know who Edgar Allan Poe is, um, there's you know, very intense fans of Edgar Allan Poe. And there's this I watched like a video of this recently. If you go to like an Edgar Allan Poe convention and you bring up the orangutan in Murders of Rue Morgue, they you will start a fight. Everyone will just break out in fucking fisticuffs. It's actually like banned topic of discussion because of like it's a very racial thing in the story okay. i'm not going to go into it but that's what you just did you were just like guys i don't know if you guys talk about this much over <laughs> on the left but uh huh the democrats really could have done universal health care couldn't they and it's just like yeah Tim. yeah they really fucking could have yeah no and that like that is a constant a constant fight you'll have someone being like oh well they could have done it and then you'll have someone else being like oh no actually they couldn't they didn't really have the votes but oh no they could have broken the filibuster but and you just have this whole thing mm, but yeah no you're right it is and this is the the fucking problem with the democrats is that they claim to stand for something but they routinely fail to deliver yeah. and and they don't stand by their principles mm. we, we elected someone 2020 who said they would veto universal health care and joe biden it's 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 insane and this is a winning electoral issue americans largely support universal health care when you explain it to them in in terms that aren't already totally. propagandized right and it's an easy win and if you had a charismatic leader who fucking pushed for this you could get it. And I know that we had that with Obama, but like the, the Democratic Party just was not set up to do it. You can do it. And look, look at the fucking outpouring of support for this assassin. Like people hate the healthcare system more than most things. Yeah. Like it is one of the most hated, besides like Congress itself. Like, and right. it's, yeah, you're right. If, if someone could accomplish this, they'd go down in history. Uh, but like the the forces that be stop that from happening because the establishment consolidates power and pushes down people like Bernie Sanders who fight for these things. Yeah. And people always go, oh, well, Bernie Sanders can't win an election. No, he can't win a primary because the fucking establishment them stop him. He would dominate the general. He would fucking dick slap Donald Trump across the face because he, he not only does he stand for the same populist working class rhetoric that Donald Trump claims to, but he actually supports the policies that right. would substantially improve the lives of the working class. Right. And he can prove that. And that's the, that, that's the whole thing that it comes down to. Like you were talking earlier, they need to weaponize this animosity. You, we were talking earlier about whether it's religion, whether it's whatever. It doesn't really right. matter. But the, the feeling, the emotion, the raw pain is there. And it needs to be acknowledged. It needs to be funneled. And it needs to be organized. And right now, the Democrats want diddly shit to do with that. But someone's going to do it. Eventually, we're going to have universal health care in this country. Yeah. And God damn it, will it piss me off if the Republicans do it. Let me tell you that. I, I wouldn't be surprised one bit. And then the reason is, the, the reason I, I specifically said Donald Trump, not only because he does, you know, command this cult-like personality where people just follow him, like, whether it makes sense or not, but because the, the Democrats are just like every other politician that they're beholden to donors. And healthcare industry is a major donor. Yeah. And yeah. I will tell you, like, yes, all your favorite Democrats, they, and it, uh, 
Uncle Tim Waltz, I don't know if you guys saw this, but Uncle Tim Waltz had a statement about this where he came out and he wrote, uh, this is horrifying news and a terrible loss for the business and healthcare community in Minnesota. Minnesota is sending our prayers to Brian's family and the United Healthcare team. Now, read the fucking room, Tim. Okay, listen, I, that's all I got to say here. Now, listen, you might personally feel this way. I Oh, uh, the, the Minnesota business community has lost an important member. Tim Walsh didn't have to say a word. You didn't have to say a fucking word about this because mm -hmm. this is not like the mood of the people is not, you know, uh, crocodile tears for universal health care, losing their CEO, making making $10 million a year to kill people. Sorry, not, not someone an outpouring of sympathy is going to like bring you a lot of political capital for. And so so, like this is the problem is that the democrats are beholden to these donors they are beholden to these industries yep. and what benefit is it of that because like look you're a politician your number one job is not to serve the people your number one job is to get reelected. that's your number one your number one concern at least is to get reelected. and getting reelected requires donations from rich people because poor people middle class people don't have the money to donate to you so your bread and butter is going to come from the rich and it's going to come from giant industries like healthcare like the largest healthcare insurance provider uh, in the country and even even old tim waltz even old tim waltz is going to bend the knee to stuff like this yep and the, the RFK thing, man, I, I, I've, I've been shouting into the void about this RFK thing because it is the most obvious example. Once again, you can't hypocrisy burn conservatives. It doesn't work. But No, it doesn't I work. Just, they it love it. They're like, like, yeah, who, and, 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 yeah, exactly. and what? Like, exactly. You, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> when, you, when you have no, imagine how fun life would be with no yeah. principles. Just imagine how much fun you could have doing that. In fact, and you can't even say that we're saying that just on the other side, because we were on the other side. Uh, at least Tim and I, we were conservatives at once. And then when our principles conflicted right. with reality, we had to right. change our minds. Right. But other conservatives don't do that. They, they just stick with it. But I remember them just, you know, just tearing their clothes and being in sackcloth and ashes whenever Michelle Obama's like, maybe we shouldn't feed our kids pig slop for lunch every day maybe we shouldn't have uh you know corn syrup in everything we eat and uh you know giving them sodas three times a day just make the food a little bit healthier conserves like this is the nanny state this yes. is the this Dude, is big <laughs> i grew up on talk radio Sean me too, Hannity. Me too. Sean Hannity. mcdonald's shouldn't be forced to disclose the amount of calories on their menu this is the nanny yep. state. what you they don't trust you that you can't say no to a cheeseburger that's ridiculous flash forward now oh my god the, the food industry is so toxic full of sugar and and seed oil we, oh we have to destroy that industry because it's just it's killing our kids it's like yeah yeah where have you guys been there's no it's like i also like when they have really dumb takes i saw this tweet that showed uh rfk has announced that a tweet saying he's doing this. I don't know if he's actually announced it, but it's just how dumb conservatives. Sorry, how uh, how conservatives are misinformed about a lot of things about See, how. TJ, how I'll rub it off on you, buddy. I'll rub it off on you. You're going to reconvert. It's our, only a matter of time. Are yeah. are sadly misinformed about the very nature of reality. But they were they were saying that RFK is is going to say that. Coca Cola has to use cane sugar oh, yeah. instead of instead of uh, a high fructose corn syrup. It's like people, it doesn't fucking matter. Your body, it's the same thing. Yes, look, fructose, glucose, sucrose. Your body doesn't know the difference. It's just sugar. Now, unless the only way that this has some benefit, if RFK says that, well, you got to use you know pure cane sugar and not high fructose corn syrup, is that it's going to cripple. The, I, admittedly, I will be with RFK on this, the uh, absurd subsidies we yeah. give to corn in the country. Yeah, and that's right. why we have so much bullshit, like sweets and totally. stuff, and everything's full totally. of high fructose corn syrup. Like high fructose corn syrup is not any worse for you than regular sugar. It's right. just that we put it in everything because we need to do something with all this goddamn fucking corn that we're, yeah. the government's paying for. So if he wants to do that and disrupt the free market, I'm all for it, but I don't think that's it. It's just a messaging to the idiots. And to be clear, I'm, I'm not a contrarian just for contrarian sake. Like I, I I will I will high five anyone who wants to reduce the amount of sugar in our food and wants to make mm -hmm. our food healthy. Like I'm all yeah. about giving kids access to healthy lunches. The problem is that this what they're calling is the Maha right movement yeah, I know. <laughs> comes with anti-vax rhetoric, anti-science. Mm -hmm. Dude, there's there's a contributor named Alex Clark. She's like I think she's like 28 years old. Okay, she had a person on the show who's like mammograms are bad for you. I this saw that mammograms actually cause cancer I'm like whoa again and she's on the, her whole thing is the health kick health 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 raw milk is good for you yada, yada. i'm like guys why do we have to bring the anti-intellectual anti-science bullshit along with things that i could high five on i could absolutely mm -hmm. high five on so many of those healthy initiatives 
But raw milk, what? Like we pasteurize it for a reason. Vaccines, literally, we can look at the data and see when vaccines came into existence, how many diseases were eradicated because of fucking vaccines. That's what I think scares me the most is like there is some good to it for sure, but it comes with so much baggage. And also RFK is not, he's not. He's he's less qualified than Dr. Oz, and that's saying something. You know, he should have no business running any kind of health department, period. That's not his skill set at all. So all much right, for TJ. so much for meritocracy, am I right? I, really, I, I see you writing things down here, but I know Tim has a hard out uh, at 8 30 here. So we're going to wrap this word, up. You the last word, TJ. You go ahead. You no, have... this is for the outro. What I wrote yeah, down so, for the outro. So okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close this out and then I'm going to throw to you, Tim. You're going to tell people where they can find you and then TJ will wrap it up. So, well, um, first yeah. off, thank you for hosting me. I, I had a lot of fun. Happy, I, I would do this anytime. I mean, TJ, Perfect. I'll give my cell phone number, bro. You let's guys do it. Talk. Yeah, let's do John, it. John's <laughs> old news in my book. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we'll start our own group chat with that. Protestant supremacy is what I always the supremacy on the show. We no, Catholics no. know we're actually superior. We don't, we don't, we're not bothered by your by, by the by the rumblings of the sheep. You and your pulp uh, heresy, you know. Uh, but no, but for real, I mean, I appreciate you guys hosting me. Yeah, people can follow our work. Wait, 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 oh, wait, 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 no, wait, no, not yet. You're not the first guest to do this. It's a whole yet. thing. So I'm yeah, gonna throw thing. You. You'll see, you'll see. Okay, you'll see, you'll see. <laughs> All right. All right, guys, thank you. You made it to the end of this episode where we were probably either talking about religion or killing people. And if you want to hear more talk about religion and maybe a little bit about killing people, I don't know. Tim, where can people find your show? Well, uh, yeah, they can find us anywhere that the new evangelicals can be found on podcasts, TikTok, Instagram, wherever. So at the new evangelicals. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Tim. So, folks, thank you so much for watching the show. Uh, we only covered two topics. So uh, whatever you watch today, we want one of two things. We learn that one, Christian nationalism is bad. And two, health insurance does not cover lead allergies. So good to see you guys. We'll catch you next time. Enjoy your week. Catch you guys later. All right. Good.